Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Mary Rose and I love to cook as well as shop. So this month I have another dinners of the week for you guys. And don't be intimidated by how much I cook because cooking is all about the heart and all about the feel. So feel free to use less and to add any ingredients you would like. These are meals that I cook throughout the month so they're not seven straight dinners of the week. And when I cook, I cook in very large batches as well as just cooking from the top of my head as well as what is in my refrigerator and what is in my pantry. So the first dish that I'm going to share with you is pretty easy. It's ground beef with Chinese vegetables and some corn and red and green bell pepper. I also think about what the dish would taste like with all the ingredients together and then think about what spices and sauces I can add to create a new dish. For leafy greens that have thick stalks, sometimes I do like to cut the stalks first, cook it for about a minute or two, and then add the leafy greens. Then you add your helping of garlic. And in this dish, I did add the red and green bell pepper, as well as the frozen corn. Then you add your onion and garlic powder. And I do like to use Costco's brands because they are very flavorful and they taste almost like fresh. Go ahead and put as much or as little as your heart's desire. You can also add a little bit of pepper at this point. I don't like to add salt because it tends to wilt the vegetables. And then you want to cover it up and then cook it for a few minutes. After a few minutes, you can see the leafy greens did hold up. The Chinese vegetables are intact and everything is colorful. So I just take everything out of the bowl because I do want to add the meat next. You also want to taste the vegetables and make sure the seasonings are on point. And even though this does not have any salt yet, we have our aromatics like onion powder, garlic powder, and fresh garlic. So give it a taste, make sure it's mom approved. And yes, it is. After browning your onion and garlic, go ahead and add your ground beef. And as you can see, I am cooking a large portion. So I used a Costco size ground beef. For seasonings, I use a good amount of garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, and a hefty amount of sea salt. You can add pepper or any other seasonings you like. Mix all the seasonings well into the ground beef and then cook it for a few minutes. Then you want to add some poison sauce and because I'm cooking a very large batch of ground beef, I added about two to three tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Next, you wanna drain all the fat and liquid that came out of the ground beef. And I am using the Costco brand so there is not as much liquid coming out. But if I were to use a local grocery store, this would be a lot of fat. I did cook a lot of ground beef and vegetables. And as you can see, I have some leftover ground beef on the side and it won't fit to my container. Same thing goes with the vegetables. I will use this for the next day. The ground beef with Chinese vegetables and corn is complete. This dish was pretty easy to make. I would consider this a weekday meal. You could serve this with hot steamy rice or serve as is. If you are enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. For the next dinners of the week, I am going to be using the ground beef and vegetables. And originally I was going to be using it as an omelet, but I got pretty lazy because I worked the night before and I am working again tonight. So I decided to make this as a very large egg omelet bake. For extra flavor, I decided to add the smoked pineapple ancho seasoning from Costco to the eggs. Now I would probably recommend just add the regular salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder to this. I would say keep this dish simple. You can add a little bit of pepper or different kind of peppers, but just don't add the smoky pineapple ancho. After mixing all the ingredients well, you do want to put this in a 350 or 375 degree oven. I am using my hefty duty pan from Emerald Lagasse and this cooks pretty well. So with a dark colored pan, you do want to lower the heat. I do mix the eggs quite frequently. I took it out about two to three times until the eggs is cooked. You don't want to overcook them, just enough where you don't see anything stringy or liquidy. You can see why I cook a large portion of ground beef and vegetables because I can use it for the next day. And I forgot to tell you, I did use 24 eggs for this dish. Go ahead and top this off now with some chopped green onion and then serve it hot with either rice or you can also put some ketchup on top like I did. I did add a little bit of cheese as well. So anyway, this was my dish or my dinner for tonight. Tastes pretty good, I think. Now
Next dinner of the night is baked salmon with ginger. And originally I was planning to put some lemongrass, but I couldn't find my lemongrass either. It got spoiled and I threw it away or I forgot to buy it. Anyway, so this is what I have on hand, ginger, as well as the bok choy. I have pretty simple seasonings this time. I have the sliced ginger, chopped onion, soy sauce, and then I'm just adding the bok choy on side. Now this salmon was pretty expensive. This was about $12 a pound, but it, it was wild caught Norway salmon and was really buttery and delicious. So I baked this on 375 for about maybe about 15 minutes because my pan does contain a lot of heat or it holds a lot of heat. So it depends on your pan and your oven. You can cook it at 400 or 425. And then because I accidentally burned the bok choy, I decided to go ahead and cook some more vegetables. I had more Chinese broccoli on hand. To cook the Chinese broccoli, I just added a little bit of broth and put it back in the same oven and pan since it was still hot. I also want to say what you pay is what you get because this Norway salmon was very buttery and delicious. I want to buy it all the time, but as a big family, I have to keep things under budget. So yeah, very flaky, very soft, delicious, and easy dinner. Enjoy! Next family size dish is chicken parm. And I don't have a recipe on hand. I just look through a few videos, get some ideas, think about what it would taste like in my head and thus recreate it. So if I make a mistake, I make a mistake and I can always make it differently to create a new dish. Anyway, I have three packs from Costco. This is chicken thighs and I season it with garlic powder, onion powder, salt, Italian seasoning and parsley. Then I take about five jars of spaghetti sauce. And again, guys, this is a large family meal. So go ahead and you can scale it back. And I just pour it right on top. As I was watching a few videos, I noticed they did pour a lot of spaghetti sauce and that's why I did as well. But I would recommend just putting about three to four. And then you add a lot of Parmesan cheese and good thing I had this large cheese from Costco. Again, large family, so everything else is large and I buy things from Costco. I started baking the chicken parm at 375 for about 30 to 40 minutes and I am using an aluminum pan and I feel like it didn't really pick up the heat all that well as well as I'm making a lot of sauce. So I would probably recommend just starting it off at 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes covered and then you can uncover it, put on the cheese like I did and I'm using the Havarti cheese right now. I'm putting a good amount of it. And then I actually added a little bit more because my son wanted more cheese. And my family's a critic, but that's okay. I am happy to please. And so I added more cheese or whatever I had left. I ended up baking this at 400 degrees for about an hour and 15 or an hour and 20 minutes. Just enough until the cheese is browned and delicious. I would like it to be less saucy, but it was okay because the next day we actually used the sauce and had it for another dinner. So I'm just plating it up, trying to make it look nice. And so I put a good helping of pasta and then I grab a piece of chicken with the cheese and poured it on top. And my husband and my kids loved it. It was one of the most delicious dinners I've ever created. It doesn't really take an exact recipe. It's just what you feel in your heart and what you have on hand. Here's to another large family sized dinner. Bon appétit. Now that we have our vegetables all chopped up, I have our spices that we're going to be using, which is really not that much. It's really the aromatics are all in here. It's the ginger, the onion, the garlic, the vegetables combined, but really these trio right here makes a dish tasty as well as the green onion. And then we have the meat that we marinated yesterday. That's the leftover. And we did split up that three packages of meat from Costco just to try to stretch the meat. And the last thing that we'll be adding is this pancit canton or canton. And usually I don't add the noodles with the chop suey, but we're hungry today and we want to stretch out our meal, so I bought the noodles. I have my fan on because it is going to get pretty smelly whenever you cook with onion and garlic and ginger. And so you need a very good exhaust and I just have my fan in the window and that kind of helps take out the smell out of the house. All right, so the pan feels like it's hot already. I'm going to add the oil. Yeah, it looks very hot. 
Looks like I'm in a Chinese restaurant. And my minced ginger. I have both minced and sliced. Now that the onion and ginger and garlic is brown, we're gonna go ahead and add the veggies. I like to cook the veggies and meat separately and then combine them at the end. Carrots. You have the green and red bell pepper, snow peas, and the string beans. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper on top. I don't want to add any salt because it's just going to roll everything down. I'll add salt to the meat instead. So these vegetables are so beautiful. They all have nice vibrant color and I want to keep it that way. We still have to add the bok choy and the mushrooms and we're going to add that after this has cooked some. I'm going to cover this just for a couple of minutes. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add the rest of the veggies. You can see why I put this separately because the meats and the veggies are not all going to fit. This is going to cook down and then at the end we can add also the noodles have to fit in here. So this is all going to cook down and we're going to have some space. This is going to be a little difficult to mix because this block is really not that big. Just mix everything the best that you can and because I am cooking a very large sized family dinner, I have a lot of food to cook. So anyway, yours will probably be smaller and easier to mix. I'm going to cover this again for maybe another minute or two. If I can cover it, it's pretty full. I almost forgot to add the baby corn and this is the one that's in the can. We saw this fresh in Costco in Canada and you can see they're chopped. Sometimes you'll find them whole. So I already emptied the water. I'm not just going to sprinkle it right on top. I'm going to mix this whole thing again. Try not to spill anything. This is a lot of chopped suey. I always overcook, you know? I just can't help it. <laughs> I don't want to cover this anymore. I don't want the vegetables to get soggy. I just want it nicely cooked with a little bit crispiness to it. And then after this, we're going to cook the meat. If you are vegetarian, you can stop right here. You don't have to add any more protein. All you have to do is add the oyster sauce, soy sauce, and well, not the hoisin sauce. The hoisin sauce I use for the noodles but just a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of oyster sauce and maybe some crushed red pepper and you can call this ready to eat we're gonna pour all the veggies into here it's gonna spread everything out so nothing gets overcooked At this point, I'm going to go ahead and add the oyster sauce, and this is the brand that I use. Probably about a tablespoon. A little bit more oyster sauce. It is a lot of meat. And just a little bit of soy sauce. We're going to just give that a good mix now and just let it cook. 
So I don't think I was supposed to add all the meat at once because it didn't really stir fry. It just kind of like cooked there. So it's cooked now and now I'm going to add all the veggies. And we're just going to combine everything and heat it up. It'd be better if I cooked the meat and the vegetables in separate batches and that way it would give a better stir fry. But because I don't have a lot of time and I have a lot of people to feed, I just did the best that I can and just mix everything together in the same wok. But if you have a smaller batch of food, this would be a lot easier. Another canned good that I forgot to add into this dish is quail eggs. And if you have watched my Costco video in Canada, I did find fresh quail eggs there. I just buy what's convenient and what's inexpensive so I just bought this at my local Asian grocery store and then you just open the can you empty it and then you can heat it up with the food now just bear in mind it is already cooked eggs so you want to be gentle in mixing it all right here we go again the vegetables are getting slightly overcooked I'm going to cook the noodles separately so it doesn't cook anymore to cook the noodles, I have about two and a half cups of water, half a tablespoon of chicken bouillon, a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and a tablespoon of hoisin sauce. I'm not gonna add everything just yet because I don't wanna overcook the noodles. I'm just gonna add about half of this. The noodles that I like to use is called Super Q. These are the most substantial noodles because they hold well when you're cooking it it doesn't break apart and it also tastes good some noodles they kind of have aftertaste i find that these don't have as much by the time everything is done your kitchen is going to be a hot mess but to help that just cut the vegetables the day before so you don't have all these dirty dishes just lying around like i do and uh it's pretty late in the night so again this is not a weekday meal this is a weekend meal where you have more time to cook I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of the sauce over and if I need to I'll just add some water because I do have a little bit more seasoning on the base of this measuring cup. You don't have to cook this whole entire package as you can see it does come in I guess sections so it has like three sections in here so if you have a smaller family you can just take one of these. I have a big family and that's why I'm cooking the whole entire thing. So again, usually my pot is piping hot, but again, this base is helping the heat escape. So this is really not um, conducive to cooking, especially when you're in a rush. I can just take this base out completely and just put it right on top of the, on top of the stove, but this pan is gonna be shaking all over the place. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I do have the heat on high. If you wanted to, you can just make lo mein and then just cook a smaller portion of veggies and I think that would be easier for a weekday meal. We're just gonna keep mixing this till it's cooked. I'm still learning how to cook this type of noodle so I don't have an exact recipe of how much liquid to the package. And it started to stick in the bottom of the pan, so I had to add some oil to it as well. You adjust the heat as needed. If it's too hot, you lower it. If it's not enough, you increase it. I did have to use a metal spatula and just try to scrape everything off the bottom. I really did overcook too much veggies here. So what I'll do tomorrow is I'll just cook some more of the noodles and then just add the veggies. So this is kind of like a pancit, the way I cooked it, but it's chop suey. I like it how some of it got a little bit crispy. Gives it an extra texture and flavor. I added the quail eggs. I'm just gonna pour this right on top. A lot of the liquid came out from the veggies and I don't want the liquid in here. The quail eggs don't really need to be heated up a whole lot. Okay, I think that will be it for our dinner tonight. And the other veggies, again, I tend to overcook, so we'll see that for tomorrow. 
And to top it off, I'm just going to put some freshly cut green onion. This dish was really a labor of love for my family. It may have taken some time to cook, but it did create three full dishes. The third one was just adding more noodles to the cooked veggies and chicken. Finally, dinner's all done and the kids have been very patient. I've been cooking for some time and they were just smelling my cooking and asked me, when is dinner, mom, when is dinner? And so finally it's done, they're eating and you can see some of them are picking out their vegetables, but it's okay, we have a lot to eat and I'm happy that they're enjoying their meal. If you guys have been enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will be making more dinners of the week once every month. I will see you guys next time. Enjoy your dinner too. Bye.